Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We're out in the greenhouse today and it is time to start getting this greenhouse ready for winter. Even though it's pretty warm out today, we fully expect our first frost to show up any day now. Now last year our first frost, it wasn't a hard freeze, but it was a frost. We got that on October 14th. Right. So we're past that time, uh, which really makes it true that any time now we could get our first frost. We need to get this greenhouse ready for the winter. Uh, it is an unheated greenhouse. We're going to be able to grow tons of food in here, even though it's unheated. But we do need to take some precautions to keep the plants that are growing in here safe from really cold weather. Right now, all of the plants that we have growing in here are pretty small. These are cool weather plants and really, the, we've had some really hot weather yet just the last few weeks and it's kind of set these back. They've come up and they're doing okay, but they're definitely not thriving at this point, and we really do feel like that is because of the heat. Now we're starting to finally cool off, and it makes us have to think about, you know, these wintertime temperatures. Even a light frost at this point could damage these tender plants. Now, inside of the greenhouse, it does stay a little bit warmer, even overnight, than it does outside, but not much. I think that's kind of a misconception about greenhouses or high tunnels is that uh, you know, they're going to stay warm over the over the nighttime, and that really isn't true. Now, in the middle of the winter, during the day, on a sunny day, this greenhouse is going to warm up to, gosh, it could warm up into the 80s. It could end up in the 90s if we didn't vent out the hot air. But overnight, when that sun goes down, this greenhouse really doesn't retain any heat at all. The buckets with the soil in may retain just a little bit, a degree or two maybe overnight. But other than that, whatever temperature it is outside is what it's going to be in the greenhouse overnight. Now, in our climate, that's not a really big deal because we don't get really harsh winters here. We mostly get, you know, you know, a lot of temperatures in the 30s and even high 20s. But for the most part, we don't get a lot colder than the 20s. Last winter, we were able to grow a ton of food all winter long. And we're hoping that this year is going to be exactly the same as long as we take the precautions that we're going to start on today. Now you can see our layout here of these big buckets that we have planted. We have four rows in this greenhouse, uh, two that are kind of close together in the middle, and then one on each side. Our plan initially for over the winter when we were first thinking about layout was to create some hoops here from one row to the other and we'll put some uh, fabric on top of here to really keep out the really cold weather, keep out the frost. And we were just going to kind of drape some fabric over these outside rows. So instead we've decided to reconfigure this and have two double rows uh, which we can use the floating row cover and the arches on both of the double rows. We think that makes a lot more sense and so that's one of the projects we're going to be accomplishing today. So what we've decided to do is we're going to move this first row of pots here over two feet and we're going to move this first row from the center over two feet. So we're going to have a double row right through this section. And then we're going to do the same thing over on the other side. That will give us a walkway along each side of the greenhouse and still a walkway down the middle. And we think that that will make harvesting easier and it's going to make keeping these plants protected easier. The one thing that we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to reconfigure the irrigation a little bit as well, but it shouldn't be a big deal at all. Um, for those of you who haven't watched uh, some of the previous videos, we're using these uh, drip irrigation or these little sprinklers inside of each pot so we can water an entire row at a time. So uh, these can stay right where they're at. We're not even going to have to take these out. You can see that there's a main line of tubing that runs along the front here. And then there's a line that runs down each row of the pots. So we're going to have to disconnect these lines and we're, we'll just move those over with the pots. And then at the very end, we'll have to just redo this one main line here at the beginning. It shouldn't take long at all. It's really not a big deal. We can reuse all the parts that we already have. So we're going to get busy starting to move these pots around. Uh, that's probably going to be the hardest part of this entire job because they are pretty heavy, especially since we've been watering a lot. So um, we're going to get these moved and then we'll move on to fixing the irrigation.
All right, we've got all of our pots moved into their new positions. We were able to move the irrigation kind of with them. But like I said, now we need to uh, redo just this main line right here. This isn't hard to do. All of this stuff is easy to hook up. I'm going to show you guys real quickly how to redo this main line. And then we can move on to seeing if our plan for the floating row covers is going to work. Right, here we are at kind of the beginning of our irrigation system. This irrigation system really doesn't have a lot of parts and it's pretty easy. So uh, this is kind of the main tube you see here on the end. This is where we connect a garden hose that comes in off of one of our frost-free hydrants outside. So, so the garden hose will connect to this end. Now off of this end, we're going to connect just a short piece of this half inch uh, mainline tubing. Most of this is the stuff we just took off a minute ago. We can reuse it. So that's good. And then this is going to connect here to the beginning, to the first row of our irrigation. And these fittings, the way they work, they just push on and then you just... It's like a reverse thread. So you tighten these over the piece of line that you just put on and that pulls it nice and tight. Now we have this set up with an on and off switch on each row of our irrigation as well so that we can water one row of buckets at a time. Our water pressure isn't good enough to allow us to water all four rows at once. So we need to water each row one at a time. But to be honest, it only takes a few minutes per row to water everything in here so um, it's not a big deal all right so now that we've got this first row connected we'll just run a piece from the other side of this T connector to the beginning of the next row and we'll just move down the line until all of these are connected All right, so we're at our final row of buckets here. So we need to now terminate the end of this irrigation system. We'll use the same piece we had before, but I just wanted to show you guys how we do this. Uh, you can buy these little, they're called figure eight adapters. And basically what this is gonna do is gonna slide onto our piece of irrigation tubing. And we're gonna kink this over like this. And then that figure eight adapter is gonna slide over that, go down and it's gonna lock it into place. And believe it or not, I always thought this didn't look like they would work well, but they work great. It won't drip at all. It'll hold that nice and tight. And that way, if you ever do need to extend it, you can take this off. Or if you want to drain all of your water out of your system, like if it's going to freeze, you can just unslide this, open that up, all the water will drain back out, and you can uh, have a nice you know, system that won't freeze up. So, All right, so that piece is just going to go right here. And now our system is all hooked back up for the next time we need to water. Now that the irrigation is done with, we can start putting up the hoops for the floating row cover. We're going to create the hoops by using these long, heavy-duty wires. They're about six feet long. We originally got these from growersolution.com, which is where this whole kit came from. It, so actually, it's where this greenhouse came from and the woven weed fabric that's on the ground and the irrigation system. Um, but this is heavy duty wire, six feet long. Now that's what we're gonna use to create these hoops. So I'm just gonna stick one end just a few inches down into the pot, bow it over, and then do the same thing with the other end. You can see it creates a nice hoop here and this is what we're going to do to every single set of these buckets and this is what will suspend the floating row cover.
Now, a floating row cover really has two purposes. The first purpose is to keep out pests and bugs. The second purpose is to keep the area inside of it just a little bit warmer, so for frost protection. We're gonna be primarily using this floating row cover during the winter for frost protection. There aren't gonna be bugs and not many pests. So during the day, we'll remove it so that the plants and the soil can warm up. And then in the evening before it gets cold, we'll cover it back up. These are, these floating row covers are amazing like out in the garden in the spring or in the fall if you're growing brassicas and lettuces and stuff. They do a fantastic job keeping out the pests and the bugs and the cabbage worm, which always destroys most of your plants. Uh, they're very effective. So this system works in the garden, not just in a greenhouse situation. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna do the rest of this row, bring out the floating row cover and make sure it all fits and make sure the system is gonna work for us over the winter. Because the heights of some of these buckets are different, they might it might look a little weird, but I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I don't think the plants will comp complain. No. Oh. <laughs> I just got attacked by the thermometer. I guess we've got one left over. All right, so here's our floating row cover. You can see this is a pretty thin material. Uh, but it will definitely help hold in some heat over the winter. Now, keep in mind, once again, and I know we say this all the time, but these plants that we're growing in this greenhouse are cold weather crops. They can handle even a little bit of frost once they're mature. So uh, this isn't, uh, you know, if you were growing, say, in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Canada, this probably wouldn't be enough. But the type of winters we get, this will be enough. So... Um, Again, you can see this is just a thin cloth. We're gonna stretch this out. We're gonna put it over our pots and make sure it all works so that when we see the weather report say we're gonna get that first frost, we're all prepared. Hey, okay, perfect. Well, you guys, we got the row cover on. Now, we are happy that it is long enough, as in the, the actual length of it, but it's not quite wide enough. We really, in order to help hold in heat, need this to go all the way to the ground on both sides. We originally bought this row cover to use in our garden, and this would have been the perfect size to use in our garden. Luckily, when we bought these, we didn't, like I said, we weren't planning to use them in the greenhouse, but we bought four of them, and so we can use two on each row, which will actually give us better frost protection as well. So we're gonna put a second one on here. We're actually gonna pull this over so it is actually down to the ground on that side. And then we're gonna pull out another one and we're gonna put that over the top. Then what we're gonna do is once we have them both on, we'll just use some clothes pins or something, you know, at the top here to hold them into place. During the winter, when, they're, when the sides are down on the greenhouse and we don't have the fans on, we only keep the fans on it during the day, not at night. Uh, there's no wind in here. So really, we probably won't even need to clip these on, but we will just to be safe. So we'll put a couple clothespins here on the pots themselves and a couple along the top, and that will work out perfectly when we need to have that frost protection. So it worked out perfectly that we had four of these and we'll have no problem covering our plants over the winter. Now we are not gonna leave this on yet because it was actually still in the upper 70s today and in the greenhouse it was quite warm. So there's no need to have these on yet. Uh, we actually want these plants to be as cool as possible right now. So we're gonna take this back off. At least we know we're all set and that this system is gonna work when that first frost comes. Well, we've got one final part of our winter greenhouse preparation and that is to take our shade cloth off of the greenhouse. We've had the shade cloth on all summer to help keep things just a little bit cooler, but it is time to get this off. Now, I really wanted this to be the first part of the project, but you guys, it was so windy today. I was convinced that if we did it during the windy part, we both would be hanging on and flying all over the place. It was yeah, not it, a good image. <laughs> right. So we've had to wait until evening. We've probably got about an hour or less of daylight left now but the wind has finally died yeah. down, so I think we can do this safely with just the two of us. Mm -hmm. 
again this greenhouse is 60 feet long so this this is a big shade cloth uh, this is a 50 percent shade cloth so it blocks out 50 percent of the sun's rays now that the days are getting shorter we really think the plants need all the sun they can get so it's time to get this off today so all of our little plants in there can start to grow before the cold weather comes all right so we need to disconnect this whole side over here and then we're going to pull from the other side and try to pull this whole thing off now this shade cloth is put on the same way that the plastic is put on the greenhouse there's a little track up here and then inside of that track is what's called a wiggle wire um, it basically locks into that track and holds the plastic or the shade cloth or whatever on tightly so when we take this off now this is a separate wiggle wire from the plastic so it shouldn't um, this won't by taking this off it's not going to take the plastic off it's just going to take the shade cloth off let me start this and then i'll show you what it looks like All right, so we got that first piece off. You can see this is what the wiggle wire looks like. It's just literally wire that kind of wiggles into that track and holds everything in place. So there's only about three or four pieces along the edge of here. We're gonna go ahead and take that all off. And then we'll move over and do the same thing on the other side before we start pulling this off. All right, we're just about ready to start pulling this off. You guys, it's getting dark fast. I didn't realize that there was also wiggle wire up over the arch so i had to get out a bigger ladder and we had to take all of that off so we're losing light i hope you guys can see okay everything is disconnected we're just gonna each grab a corner and pull and hope that this just slides off you doing this corner or the back sure, corner? sure i can try to do this corner can you reach it see that's what i was saying before i might i might need help oh that's gonna come off easy i hope so don't jinx us <laughs> But we gotta do it like one, two, three, and then really pull. I need to pull and not get hung up in this on there. So I'm gonna pull that way. You ready? I was just gonna pull, let it kind of fall straight down. Oh, okay. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. Wait, 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 wait. Here. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. All right. Hooray! <laughs> we thought we had a snafu, but it all turned out just fine in the end. It is off. It's nice to be able to actually see <laughs> out the top of the greenhouse and you can see the beautiful sunset behind us. It is starting to get dark. We moved inside so we could turn the lights on so you guys could see us for the end of this video because it's it this time of year once it starts to get dark it gets dark fast you guys we sure enjoyed having you today when we did our projects here getting this greenhouse ready for the winter thanks for stopping by um, if you're enjoying our videos make sure that you hit the subscribe button below and remember that the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media until next time thank you so much for stopping by our homestead Take care and God bless. God bless.